We're taking out a cedar tree today, guys. Started dying from the top down. Still a lot of good foliage in the lower half of the tree, but the customer decided to go ahead and take it down just to mitigate any risks of it coming down um, in the future. So we have some obstacles to get around today. Uh, we have a shed off to my right side here and the house is on my back along with an electrical box it's not far from the base of the tree so think about where you need to position your limbs as you're going up these trees so that you can put them in a spot that will be the most effective to cushion those larger sections as they come down although you guys can't see it on the ground there is a line of gravel right in front of me here that is a curtain drain so there is a pipe under the ground probably pretty shallow that I can't hit with one of these sections unless I put down some sort of cushion or rig the tree down because I'm working by myself I just opted for putting down a bunch of limbs back there to create that cushion and then I can drop those sections right on top of the limbs without causing any damage to the drainage system. So initially I started climbing this tree and limbing it out. I was planning on just sticking with my lanyard, not putting a line above me. But as I started to go up, the limbs were actually quite large on the lower part of this tree and they were extremely long. So I decided to go ahead and put a line above me. And what that gives me is that added support that I need to grab limbs and be able to rotate around the tree and drop them wherever I want. This also really helps with the amount of pressure that is on your ankles and your feet from the gaffs. It takes that off. So here you can see I'm just using a rescue eight and a small diameter line. Um, normally I double this line up. It's about an eight millimeter line. The reason I use such a small line is I knew I was going to be in my lanyard for a majority of the work and not relying on that single line. If you are going to be unclipping out of your lanyard over and over again and relying just on that one safety line above you, definitely stick to something like an 11 or 12, even a 13 millimeter rope. It just gives you that added security and a little bit less stretch in the line. Here you're going to see me taking up a bunch of slack out of that line and tensioning up my rescue eight. All you need to do if you have a lanyard around the tree is soft lock these things out. You can see it right here on the right side. You just tuck that line behind one of the horns in the rescue eight and it locks it in there tight. Out of all the times I've climbed with this rescue eight and used it in this fashion, I have never had one of these soft locks come out. So they're extremely secure. If you're only gonna be relying on the rescue eight and you have no lanyard, I would suggest doing a hard lock on it. And that's basically soft locking it and then putting some sort of knot through the rescue eight just to ensure it can't slip.
because you're limbing out trees like this cedar where they got really long limbs sticking out over the top of other trees next to them be careful as you're cutting them you don't want those limbs to get tied up way up 50 60 feet in the air where you can't reach them unfortunately on this job i had a really long limb get stuck in an alder next to me on the right side there and i was unable to retrieve it thankfully it was hanging out over the smaller trees that are on the property line so it's not in any real danger of coming down but just something to think about as you guys are working on these uh, these types of trees We're in the top now getting ready to cut both of these stems down. It's a double top um, up here and you just need to really keep in mind this tree is dead so the integrity of these tops is kind of unknown. You don't want to be moving around a whole lot or putting your lanyard in just one of the tops. If you see in this, I have my lanyard around both the tops in case something were to happen with one side or the other. I'm still safe and tied into something. Um, so just keep that in mind. Use as much of the tree as you can for safety um, to support yourself. Sometimes you get in these double tops and they are spread apart pretty far and you can't really do that. However, you could always put a line in one of the stems repel down work on the other side cut it down and then you can move back to the one with your line in it that adds that extra level of safety um, in case again one of the tops goes because they're always prone to rot in those connection points there Again guys, utilize those snap cuts. You're gonna see me constantly using this cutting technique throughout all my videos. And the reason for it is you're always cutting horizontally through the tree, which is the fastest way. When you're trying to cut the wood grain at any other angle, it becomes much slower. Um, so utilize the snap cuts, work on it, practice. It's gonna make you so much faster at getting these trees on the ground. As you can see here, I am taking my time to drop this section. You do not want these pieces hitting each other. There's so much built up energy when you're higher up and dropping these sections on top of each other that it can send one flying right in the side of a house into a vehicle or somebody else that's on the ground. So take your time, really think about where that thing's gonna go and try and imagine how it's gonna land when it hits the ground.
So now that we got the cedar on the ground, we just got one more thing to tackle on this job. That's this left branch you can see here. It's leaning out over the house. Uh, customer wanted that cut down. So getting set up by climbing all the way to the top of this alder, putting in a DRT system using a Petzl zigzag. That gives me a lot of stability then to rappel down into that um, left stem and take it down. Whenever you gotta work down these multi-stem trees and you got a branch or a stem that's way out away from the main trunk, again, just think about where you can put a line. I typically use DRT because it gives you that two to one ratio when you're pulling your line in. That helps you actually stabilize the stem that you're getting into. And if you can see here, there's quite a bit of rot and this stem is not looking so good. You would not want to be in this with just a lanyard on. You, you know, the possibility of it breaking out um, while you're up there is just extremely high, and then you have no support system above you. Alright guys, this concludes the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something today and I'll see you guys on the next one. God bless. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savour, Wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For 
verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled.